I wanted to kind of know what's going on so far in the Eredivisie. Why have Ajax bolted from their normally high standards, their superior standards in the Netherlands? And what's really happening in the title race? Because you're looking at PSV, you're looking at Feyenoord um, as well. And there's a few more conversations of Eredivisie players I want to talk about. One of them, obviously, of course, is Santiago Jimenez as well. So starting with Ajax and then talking about the title race, let's let's hear it. I want to hear your thoughts on what's happening with Ajax first of all this season because they've sold so many players. A lot of them come into the Premier League in England as well, but they haven't replaced as much as they can. And Jordan Henderson as well joining Ajax as well. That was a very big story. Yeah, well, it's... You know, everything has to be put in context and it's just not... A random thing that Ajax basically fell apart. Yes. You know, because I don't think we can put it in any other way. But it fell apart ever since Mark Overmars uh had to quit the club because of his, you know, um sexual harassment and predator behavior. Very awful. The way that yeah, you just tried to move. Absolutely it. awful. Yeah, in football, we see that a lot where a lot of people just brush it under the carpet. But Ajax, like, no, we've got to get rid of you. And fair play to Ajax as well, because a lot of people, like, again, for Man United, we've seen a few issues of that happening and they brush it under the carpet. Chelsea brush it under the carpet. But you know, but you know what? I am not sure. And still, we are not really sure how much they all knew. I mean, it was fairly known mm. that he harassed women. The thing is that how much did Thunder Sar knew no, I mean, yeah. and and how much the other members of the board of directors uh knew. And that's something that we still don't thoroughly know. Uh, but the thing is that he was besides that, uh, he was a brilliant uh football director. Yes. We have to acknowledge that. He was amazing. Uh, he, he was amazing, exactly. But you cannot condone that behavior. And he had to quit. I mean, it's he was pushed basically to resign. He needed to, really. Uh, because, the, yeah, he needed to. But it's not only that, but because this was a whole report that was going to be published the next day on on a, on a national uh, newspaper. So basically, it, it you know, it went around the world. There was no escape from it. And there was no escape for the club. So he had to do it. And actually the announcement came like at 1 a.m. or something. And there was like a little advance of the report of the investigation on the uh, newspaper's website and all hell broke loose. Were you awake and, for that or did you have to wait till the next morning? And, uh, no, I think I think I saw it. I think it's, I saw it. But Fantastic. anyway, anyway, it was when I started reading, it was terrible. It was terrible. And then Edwin van der Sar was silent for like a week. And of course, he received all kinds of criticism too. Mm. But the thing is that the, the, the position that left uh, Overmars um, vacant wasn't filled for a year and a half. Uh, and then, you know, in the meantime, Ajax, the Ajax decline started. And when van der Sar appointed Edwin Mislintat, the German who had like a, a very good on paper uh resume yeah then it was a complete disaster no experience uh, in basically but also like very shady management and ways of doing things like threatening uh the the coach and and doing like shady business supposedly with some players uh who you know that for example hi the danish defender yeah. No one, the, the Ajax scouts who work for the club in Denmark, uh, they didn't know anything about the player and they didn't recommend him. So it's been missing that when, you know, he circled around the structure of the club. And, and you just forgot about them, really, when you're looking at it. Like, I don't need your experience but, at all. But worst of all, that he had a relation with the management of some players so that was very very um ugly to say i mean that it, it didn't look good so when all those things started to come out and then of course the results were terrible and maurice's time uh the the coach also he wasn't experienced like to take it he came from pex volley like yeah. a, a, a very fairly small team who sometimes relegates and then comes back 
you know so they're not too far from each other now in the era divisi i think Ajax exactly text volley are around 11th or so as well so the thing is that he maybe is not like a bad coach but he yeah. came in the worst at the worst moment at ajax and then van der sar quit and then the whole board of directors quit and then the whole supervisory board quit so it was like a headless uh club it was total anarchy so Definitely. it was it was terrible. So then in a year and a half, in two years, uh, the club basically fell apart. And then uh, Maurice Stein, after the Klassiker with Feyenoord, Feyenoord, you know, he had to be played in two parts because the... The, the, the game was uh, called off. In, yeah, the game was called off because the hooligans did it, basically. Every single time it happens as well, but yeah. they went overboard this time by going into, like, the board of directors bit, and they went in different entrances, and you're just like, come on, it's just a football game, you want to just see your team is playing. Exactly, so they were protesting, the they were protesting, but at the same time, they didn't want to see at home their team losing by a tremendous amount of goals against their arch rival. Yeah. So that was it. And then, you know, I had to cover it. To, uh, it was like the first time that happened to me. And the second time, like, it was like 30 minutes left or something, 37 minutes left. And it was on an empty stadium, on an empty Johan Cruyff Arena. And it was like, what the heck? Such a Locked beautiful game. Again. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. So, uh, but basically after that, like Maurice Stein, left and and also has been means between that so if that's what they wanted the hooligans they got it and then john van het skip came and in a, also in a very complicated situation because he has lost he had lost his wife like three weeks earlier yeah um uh, due to cancer so it was very painful but he had he said that he had to do it because it was their club yes like felt a sense was, of ownership yeah, as well and responsibility exactly responsibility you know my my wife would have told me to do it would have liked me to do it because they met at the club when he was a player so i just you know had a, a, a very deep meaning for them as a, as a couple and as a family definitely and now he has done what he can but of course it's not like the same level of players they lost also a good very big talents who of course didn't want to stay at the club and uh, and um, that's the state of things. But at least, I mean, there, there was a moment at the uh, at the beginning of the season where they were in relegation. In the yeah. relegation, but they were the last. It and was then, crazy to see that. It's just like yeah. you, you don't expect to see it at all. And then you'll see Ajax no. in the bottom half of the table exactly, around Christmas time. Exactly, exactly. And now now they are in the the upper half. So, But still, like, it's, it's to be seen if they will be playing European uh, football next year. I mean, next season, so we don't know, but still it's not the level of, but it's not what you expect from yeah. Ajax at all.